Let's see who else you owe. Okay. <laughs> That's my boyfriend. What's his name? His name's Michael. Michael, and how long have you been with Michael? Two years. Two years, so he didn't know you as an Olympic hopeful. He actually did, because he was my brother's best friend. How did you then hook up with your brother's best friend? Um, after the Olympics and stuff, I he just started hanging out with me more, and I kind of grew on me. So somebody liked you after the Olympics? Yes. How refreshing. I know, it was. That was pretty nice. It was very nice. So what do you owe him? Well, I just, I do a lot of stuff for him. Like what? I've taken care of him a little bit financially. In what way? He had some debts, and I paid him off. How much? Oh, gosh, how much? I don't know if you say that. Probably like 8000 Did you buy him a car? No. I bought my brother a car. I bought your brother a car? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you bought your brother a car uh -huh. and paid off your boyfriend's debts? Yes. Okay. Lending that amount of money to a man says to me that there's a possibility that we're trying to buy our way into love or out of something else. It was money that I got from gymnastics and stuff. I didn't, I didn't want it. You know what I mean? It, it was, was money that icky was... Icky money? Icky money, yeah. Do you have any of that money left? No. How much icky money did you get rid of? Probably like 60000 or something. 60000 you got rid of the icky <laughs> money. Yeah. That's insane. Like, I'm just like, how much? Was, was that enough for your brother? Or did you give your brother more? I gave him stuff for um, his college. So you gave him money for college uh -huh. and you paid off his car. Uh -huh. Is that debt clear? I don't feel like it is because somehow I don't feel close with him. So. Okay. So when you are in gymnastics, mm -hmm. are you allowed to cry? No. Not allowed to cry? No. So when you're competing and you fall on your back during the Olympic trials, you, do, you cannot cry. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's maybe why you're giggling mm -hmm. when you want to cry? Mm -hmm. I feel really sad that Vanessa conditioned herself to disconnect from how she really feels. So she's really lost. <laughs> so, so Vanessa, mm -hmm. you go to the balance beam mm -hmm. and you don't stick. Mm -hmm. You misstep and you fall. Mm -hmm. And you're on your back, on your floor, on the floor. So stand up for one second. Can you stand up for mm -hmm. one second? So you get up and there are all of these people in the crowd. Do you remember that moment? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and there you stand up, and from some place in this tiny little body, you try to gather up mm -hmm. whatever it is to walk off, right? Right. Okay. So look around, and in your brain, you're probably saying, oh, damn. Yeah. And, okay, I want you to walk off. Okay. Okay. And this is what I want to do. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Right there. Right there, right there. Right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's hard to describe when you see somebody let go for that first time. She can do it and she sounds like she's here to do the work and and we're all knowing that place that she's coming from let's go ahead and watch something this is Vanessa's self-portrait. So why don't you go ahead and talk to us about it? Okay. Well, that's supposed to be me. I kind of drew, like, stuff that was tied to me. They're like little balls and chains. I think a lot of them say all the things that are weighing me down, like weight issues and fear of failure and stuff like that. And then I have balloons in the air of all the things that I want to get, not being scared to try new things and better relationship with my parents and getting married and stuff like that. So I feel like if I didn't have those things tied to me, I'd be able to get the balloons and fly into the rainbow. So, Vanessa, your goal in the Starting Over house is to develop a new identity. Yes. How does that feel? Good. My goal of having a new identity is a little bit scary just because I'm not going to be a gymnast or known as a gymnast anymore. I have to almost find a new person, and I don't know what that entails. Yes. Have a great day, ladies. Oh, my yes. Lord.
And Miss Renee, did you hear back from your dad yet? Well, okay. How we will. That? We'll respond. I've never been able to do that. <laughs> so are we in a very familiar surrounding to you? Yes, it's like home. It's like home? Yes. Is that what you think of a gym? Mm -hmm. Is home? Yeah. I like it because I miss it sometimes. Mm. What do you miss about it? The smell of it and uh, just, I like all gymnastics, like reminds me of blue because of the mats and stuff and it just feels like a comfort. Yet in group today you were talking about how you would never do it again if you had to do it over. I think if I walked into a competitive uh, a competition arena, it would make me hate it. So what's the difference between a competition arena versus just a Pressure. Gym? Pressure. Mm -hmm. No fun. If you'd fall on something, you'd get yelled at, and, you know, it was criticism the whole time, basically, because you have to be perfect in it. So how do you think that's translated into your regular life after gymnastics? A lot. Here you have this perfection mentality. Mm -hmm. I want to be the best in everything I do. Best girlfriend, best, you know, daughter, best whatever. You talk about success. I want to be a success. I want to be a success. I want to leave a mark somewhere. I want to be known for something. I don't know. I want to do the final, like, like Olympics gold medals, the final accomplishment. The final. The final thing. So you have to do something final. So what does success mean? Finishing something. Didn't you? Haven't you done that? No. I don't feel like I have. I feel like I went you didn't most go. of the way. In the, right. Or at least the Olympics. I didn't go to the Olympics. I think I would have felt a little bit better if I went there. Because that's what you're supposed to do, you know? That's Again, other point. people's expectations. Right. talked about is failure mm -hmm. so I'm thinking your first step is face failure okay I think that's wonderful I always feel like I have really good ideas of things I want to do and then I'll go either halfway or I won't do it at all because I start saying doubts about what's gonna happen or, or even other people like my mom is exactly like me she believes in everything that I want to do you know you should do it she's all about risk taking stuff and my dad's the opposite you know just settle down you know and be safe and that's why we're gonna have number two is release okay. others expectations okay I think we'll be on this step for a while <laughs> I think okay. this will be a long one we can't create your new identity develop your new identity unless we eliminate this this is one of the first things we're gonna do right well that's good because I feel like that's controlling my whole life let's redefine success okay you're clueless about success like most people are number four Accept body reality. Okay. How about become a risk taker? That sounds good. That one got you excited. Yes, it did. Okay. Imagine what, where you'd be in life or how you'd feel about yourself if we actually accomplished these five steps. I feel like I have so much like power and motivation in me, but all of this stuff is stopping it. One of the things I think that I'm finding out about you, Vanessa, mm -hmm is you're very much a human being. You're not a machine. You're not a robot. You're not a, a doll or a puppet. Right. You're a human being. And I think in the starting over house, as we develop your new identity, mm -hmm. claiming your humanness is going to be part of that. Okay. day I feel comfortable with my roommates. I feel like I just want to make sure I stay true to my real feelings and not doing what other people want me to do. So I'm excited. I'm, I'm a little bit nervous to see what's ahead, but um, I'm excited.